Hi everybody, it's Witchy Mom here and thank you for joining me on my channel. Um, sorry it's taken so long to kind of put another video up. I've been having some technical difficulties. Finally got myself a little tripod, so I'm going to try that out. Um, I don't have my makeup on today, so um, <clears throat> excuse the face. Um, even though I'm beautiful, I already know, I get it. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, today I wanted to talk about, just really quick, um, about some common misconceptions about witches. Um, and just so, show you a couple things that um, I have purchased and bought that we kind of use a lot. Uh, and when I say we, it's my husband and I because he is on a um, similar path, not quite the same, um, but magical path. And, um, <clears throat> sorry about getting all close to the thing. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. <clears throat> um, behind me, you can see, um, this little bookcase here. Um, this is where we put our herbs, um, and we're collecting <coughs> a lot of herbs and we're collecting more and more, um, between a couple of witch shops um, and magical supply stores that are by us, there's technically only two. There's one that's closest to us, um, and it's smaller, and then there's one about an hour and like 10 minutes away from us. Um, that has a little bit more when it comes to uh, supplies. And so, <clears throat> but we were able to get um, a good amount of herbs, and herbs are very... Um, very, a lot of multi-uses for them. You can make oils, you can make um, bath salts or bath bombs with them. You can <clears throat> use them to make certain spells and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and to obviously cook with. Not all herbs, but some herbs. <laughs> and um, so they're really powerful, but yet um, very simplistic, which is something that is very nice. And a lot of times they're not super expensive. It really depends on, I guess, what kind of herbs you get. But for the most part, it's not super expensive. Uh, we usually tend to get about an ounce whenever we go of, of, of that certain herb. And I'll just show you a couple of things that we have just gotten. Um, <clears throat> this is one thing. This is chamomile um, in the flower form. Um, it smells pretty good to me. Um, I got this not only to use in um, rituals or, or spells or whatever, but to mostly use them making my own bath salts. And car uh, I keep wanting to say caramel. Um, chamomile is um, a really nice thing to add to your bath because it's very relaxing. And um, for those who especially don't like the smell of lavender, which I just really can't stand the smell of lavender, it usually gives me a really bad headache. Um, so I don't know if you can actually see, I'll try to hold it up to the camera. It's like a flower and you can either put, you know, this as a whole, or you can use a mortar and pistol and, um, grind it up. And when you usually do that, it kind of releases its natural oils and it, the smell kind of makes it a little bit stronger in that case. Um, we have gotten some really nice jars. This is our biggest jar. Uh, I got this for a dollar at our local Dollar Tree. And it's really nice. It has this little hook and it is really nice. And this is supposed to be an ounce. Um, it got weighed. It said it was an ounce, but it looks like a lot more than an ounce to me. <clears throat> um, and then we got some... We haven't put this in a jar yet because we need to get more. But this is dandelion root, and it kind of looks like this. It's dried. And again, multiple different kinds of uses. Another thing that my husband actually kind of found, um, and I love the smell of, um, instead of using sage to cleanse your house or for smudging purposes, these are, uh, how do you say it, Playo? Uh, Palo Santo. Palo Santo, and it is a type of wood, and it looks like this. And um, it's just pieces of wood, and it's also known as the, the holy wood. 
but it smells so good, like so good. Even if you just want your house to smell good, um, you could burn this. You don't really need to use it for its magical purposes, um, but it smells really good. To me, it smells like licorice. Now, I personally don't like the taste of licorice, but I love the smell of it. So, and all you would do is you would light the end of it, let it smoke up a little bit. If fire starts at the end, you just blow it out and let the smoke purify the air. Good for negativity, clearing out old things in the house and letting in new. And it's a good um, substitute um, if you don't really like the smell of sage um, to use this because it's really sweet smelling. So that's something that we've been using. <clears throat> and then of course we have um, incense. Uh, you can get different kinds of incense. Um, this one is frankincense. This one is cinnamon. Now cinnamon in itself is a nice powerful herb to use. Um, it can be used for a lot of different things and it's something that usually uh, that you have in your house because if you really want it to you could always just um, boil some water and put some cinnamon sticks in there and let it boil and then it, it will literally smell the house like cinnamon and that's something really easy to do you just put a little boiling water on the pot and put a cinnamon stick in there and there you go you got smell uh, but this is the incense of cinnamon. <clears throat> and all you would do is put it in your little incense holder and let it burn. Um, it can be good for just A, if you want your house to smell good, um, something different besides candles or a uh, wax burner. Or if you want to use the incense for um, meditation purposes, right before a ritual or to light it during a spell. It kind of just relaxes you and eases your mind because when you do a spell, you really kind of want your energy levels to kind of be even toned and even and high. You know, you want you want to have energy. You don't want to do a spell or a ritual when you're kind of low in energy because it takes a lot out of you. So <clears throat> that's something that we, we use a lot. <clears throat> um. Then we also have this big thing, which is a huge mortar and pistol. Now, this is something that you could use for guacamole, but <laughs> if you want to use it, um, we tend to use it for things that really need to be grind up really well because it has a really nice um, deep ridges in it to really kind of grind up and get some of those um, smells and oils out. And it's really good for... Um, really good for grinding and breaking down things because of the ridges um, and it kind of just sounds pretty I don't know if you can really hear that but it's kind of relaxing it has a really huge um, pistol and like I said this is a really bigger one and it's granite and it, it weighs it's it's pretty heavy <clears throat> I also had got my husband a smaller one um, and it's um, what granite is it granite the other one that I like? Marble. Marble. It's marble. I'm sorry. I'm talking to my husband. He's right over here. So if you see me like looking over here or like going, hey, what is this called? It's it's him. I'm not talking to an imaginary friend. Um, but, and we use that one for different things. And um, just because the granite one kind of is hard to clean out if you, if you use certain things in there. You don't want to get certain things caught in there because even if you wipe it out and clean it out, um, the ridges still kind of collect things. Um, <clears throat> those are the things that are kind of what we use a lot. Um, herbs, the mortar and pistols, incense. And we also use candles a lot. Uh, candle magic is very powerful, but yet very simplistic as in herbs. Um, different colors candles can represent different things. And you can also anoint the candles with certain oils and um, that kind of thing. Um, so those are the things that we kind of use on a daily basis or a lot more so of than other things. Um, <clears throat> I got a cauldron for Christmas. I haven't yet used it. Um, I'm kind of waiting to uh, uh, get some inspiration to, uh, to do a spell. Um, I'm going to do it in my fireplace. And um, so I'm, I'm kind of working on, on coming up with something for that. 
Uh, but you can use cauldrons for different things. Uh, I have a bigger size cauldron and I'll show it eventually. Um, it, it's bigger, so like kind of like what you would picture like hanging from like a wood stove or like in a fire, you know, in like, um, sh you know, movies or something that you would associate with witches. Um, but there's also small, small ones and you can get them out of copper. You can get them out of cast iron, which is what I got. Um, and a couple other things and, um, smaller ones you can use to burn incense. Um, there's a lot of uses for cauldrons. Um, now <clears throat> to a little, to, to what I kind of really wanted to talk about, which is a little bit of misconceptions with witches. Um, do we all wear black? No, obviously not. I'm not wearing black. I have no makeup on today. My nails are like a dark blue. That's really the only thing that I have on that's dark. Um, I mean, that's usually a person's preference and style when if what they wear. Um, some witches are very uh, flamboyant in what they wear. You know, they wear the long dresses and the long hair and the, you know, cool dark lipstick. Um, and again, that's usually just personal style. Uh, and some witches are a little bit more neutral <laughs> or a little bit, I guess you'd call it normal or boring um, in what they wear. And again, just personal style comfort. Um, <clears throat> another thing is <clears throat> we all, we all dance around naked in the moonlight around a fire. <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, again, personal preference. Uh, there are some people I'm sure that do, but a lot of us, you know, don't. Um, again, that's just personal preference. Now, there is a reason to it. It's not just because we, <laughs> we just like to be nude. Um, it's usually because, um, when you are out doing a ritual, you're usually outside with nature, uh, things that are natural, things that are not man-made. So of course, when you go out and you are doing a ritual to, uh, who, whatever God that you believe in, or you're praying to whatever God that, that you believe in, um, you want to be, uh, what you came into this world with, and that is your birthday suit. And it's, it's about <clears throat> being natural, not having any, any, anything synthetic on you, um, being grounded um, in your own skin. And that's usually where that comes from. Um, it, it, there is rhyme and reason to it. Uh, other people, if they don't feel totally comfortable being nude, um, they also can wear um, cotton, like a cotton uh, nightgown or, uh, or linen because cotton and linen are natural. Um, it grows from the earth. Um, and um, it, it's lightweight. Uh, and other people who do magic and witches and stuff just wear whatever they want to wear. It's all about comfort. And that's the most important thing is if you're comfortable and you feel good about what, what you're wearing and how you feel, that's what will um, come out in the end. And that's what you want. Um, all witches worship the devil. No, that is like the biggest no-no. Like, no. And even Satanists a lot of times don't believe in the Christian devil as we Christians tend to believe in. And a lot of witches don't believe in Christianity. They don't follow that path. So they're not worried about the devil, about the Christian devil. They're not worried about that. It's not something that's even on their radar. Um, so no, it's, it's, if they're not even worried about the Christian beliefs because a lot of them don't follow it, um, like Wiccans and stuff like that. I mean, I'm a Christian witch, so obviously I do. I do believe in the devil. Um, I do believe that there are demons. Um, but again, that's not something that I call upon. I always call upon God and Jesus and archangels. Uh, but it's... If it's something that they don't even believe in, then obviously they're not calling upon the devil. <laughs> um, so that is another misrepresentation of witches. Um, and to say, and um, <coughs> so, no. Um, another thing is um, <clears throat> sacrificing of animals. <laughs> I love animals. My husband loves animals. My family loves animals. Um, most of the witches that I know 
and talk to or the same way. They don't condone and hurting animals at all. Um, I'm sure that, that somewhere out there in this world, I'm sure you do have people who sacrifice animals. Um, and a lot of times they're not following um, a witchy path. Um, it's usually a different kind of path that they're following. Um, um, if for some reason a witch needs a certain animal part or um, a pelt or a hide of some sort, there are other ways to go about it that are um, that are that are better than obviously going out and killing an animal. Obviously, there's people that hunt, um, so a lot of times if they're getting rid of the the coat or or the skin of the animal, that's a good way to get something if you need it. My husband uses sinew, uh, which is sinew is like a piece of tendon. Um, and you can get it from an elk or you could get it from a deer. I think those are usually the, or moose, those are usually the two elk and deer are the most popular. And that just comes off in little strips like thread. And that's usually what native Americans kind of use to thread, um, their clothes and blankets and things. Um, uh, but it also has magical purposes to use it for. Um, um, but also there's also taxidermists. Um, and that is how I got some rib bones from a raccoon. Um, I needed to get it for my husband because he wanted to create his own bone dust. And so um, I got a hold of a taxidermist and they, he was able to, he had those. So those are other more humane ways of getting things. You know, you don't want anything of the animal to go to waste. So if you can use it, use it, you know. Um, so no, we don't go around sacrificing animals. It's just something that witches tend to hold life as precious and animals are included in that. Uh, cats. In order to be a witch, you gotta have a cat. Um, that's usually something that you get from kids. Uh, and the answer is no, you don't need to own a cat in order to be a witch. Um, and having a cat does not make you a witch. I myself have two cats and a dog. And um, I, I don't really know what kind of started the whole cats and witches. Um, the only thing I can really think of um, is that cats are kind of mysterious and they come out at night and they hunt at night. They're not they're nocturnal and they kind of, you know, do what they want to do when they want to do it. And I think... Um, that just kind of resonated with witches and, um, in you know, in general and, and women in general, um, you know, we don't want to be told what to do. You know, it's kind of a strong woman power thing. Um, but I, I, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of as why a witch would have a, you know, maybe how that started. Don't know if that's true. Maybe I should look it up. Maybe I can find stuff. If you actually know, then let me know. Um, what else? Oh, witchcraft is a religion. No, it's not a religion. It is a tool. It is a practice. Um, witchcraft is not a religion. It, it's, it's simply a tool to help you in whatever path that you have. I mean, there's Christian witches, which is what I am. There's atheist witches. There's Buddhist witches. There's Muslim witches. There's um, pagan witches. Now, Pagans can be a witch or they cannot be a witch. Um, you don't have to be a witch to be a pagan. Um, now, a lot of times, whenever you say witch, someone says, oh, you're Wiccan. No, not everybody who practices witchcraft is a Wiccan. Um, Wiccans, um, that is a religion. Uh, they tend to have their own set of rules and, you know, their own read that they follow. Um, and, and so that's what makes those a religion. Uh, but they use witchcraft a lot of times. A lot of Wiccans are witches and um, possibly not all. I don't know because I'm not a Wiccan. Um, but, you know, they use it as a tool, just like everybody else that that, that, that tends to use it. Uh, I keep looking over here because my phone is tilted. And I keep thinking over here is the camera, but it's over here. <laughs> so if you see me kind of looking over here, it's because I have no idea where my camera is. It's over here. Um... So those is what that that that's a few misconceptions about witches. Um, 
So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. And um, don't forget to subscribe. Um, turn on the notification button so you you know you see when I um, I pop up and put a new video out. I'm gonna try to do it twice a week. And um, thanks again. Bye bye.